Inside this crate is a Carvera desktop CNC mill that can mill PCBs, aluminum, and all sorts of good things. I've been really excited to check this out. Let's get to cracking it open. Just to be clear, Mikara sent me this unit for free to review. Wow. That's pretty sweet. It's pretty glorious. We dig it. Manual acquired. And the next step is indeed to take these out. And I got some more light. I love having a T-handle set, by the way. There we go. Accessories. Power cable. Tool preparation. It's wireless Pro. Tool one. Manual tool setter. Spare eighth inch bit collar. Allen wrench and backup screws. Phone iPad holder. Spare tool bits. Spare dust filter. Laser goggles. Safety goggles. And an e-stop button. Tool kits. This the bits that I'm supposed to be loading. Yep, this is an eighth inch, 30 degree, 0.2 millimeter V bit. That goes there. Charge the wireless probe. After the device is turned on, the yellow indicator light will light up as the wireless probe automatically starts charging. Oh, there we go. He stop. Imagine with a connector like that, I'm gonna be able to figure out where that goes. I guess let's jump into software. I have the Carvera controller installed here on my laptop. It's connected via USB. It came with this examples guide. And they have some different projects to try. So the first one is this LED light, which has like a bunch of different pieces. We need single-sided PCB, MDF wasteboard. This is our wasteboard. Cut. 2 millimeter MDF with a size of 150 by 100 as the wasteboard. This barely fits under there, okay. This is just a sacrificial board so that when we drill holes in this, it doesn't drill into the main bed here. We need a setup like this to fixture it in there. I have not done a lot of CNC milling, but my understanding is that work holding, the thing you're doing the work on down to the bed is of vital importance. Now let's open a file. Set working coordinate to X offset 15. Check the scan margin. Check the auto Z probe option. Five points, five points, and a height of two. And then click run. All right, well, imagine we have to close this. Doing a thing. All right, this is our laser wireless probe, or wireless probe, not laser. Dead or not set. I think we need to connect the wireless probe. Uh, let's stop this, and I like that. I think I found what I was missing. <laughs> you have to pair the wireless probe. Press the wireless probe until the green light blinks quickly. There we go. Okay, let's try this again. Yes, okay, that worked. Let's give this another shot. Okay, so this is probing the top of the circuit board, the PCB, so that it doesn't have to be completely flat. It can have a little bit of variation and the machine will adjust accordingly. Now we're switching to the V-bit. Looks right. Hey, hey, hey. We apply the UV solder mask. Okay, we're gonna have to vacuum up some of this dust. Use the sanding block in the accessory kit to polish the two speakers. A little bit there, a little bit there. That's looking pretty good. And then cure it with a UV curing lamp. lamp. So we'll set it to five minutes. All right, not quite cured yet. I'll give it 15 minutes. I don't know. So, I'm not sure that was recording, but 
solder mask is cured, I'm now running the solder mask removal. Right, we're gonna drill. Looks like it's about done. It's just doing the final routing on the edges. The dust collection isn't doing great on this. Let me vacuum it up. That looks pretty awesome. It intentionally left tabs here, but you can see big, huge portions didn't get all the way routed through, so I'm gonna have to cut those. Okay. Not the most even solder mask job on my part, but not terrible either. I think it'll work. Let's move on to the next piece of their sort of examples. It's the base of the stand and it's made out of ABS. And so we need our waste board and then ABS plastic board 150 by 150. All right, waste board cut. These guys all sort of hanging off the sides here. Oh, and then two bolts. There is a different L bracket. Not bad. So it's got tabs. I'll have to cut through those. There we go. Could have a little bit better finish on it, but again, I think that's the cam program as much as anything else. Yeah, that is not too shabby. Next, we make the acrylic sign plate here. All right, I'm gonna go cut this. All right, there we go. We have Spider-Man, R2-D2, a face, Carvera, or balloon. We're gonna go with R2-D2. Run. Not shabby at all. Yep, there we go. That looks pretty sweet. The last step is aluminum. Some sort of touch switch button deal. And of course we need more wasteboard. The aluminum file loaded, run. That looks really good. I'm excited about that. But I gotta figure out how to get these tabs off. Use the hand saw to remove the tabs, okay. There we go. Let's assemble this thing. They give you a kit. It includes an already soldered board. So you can either use that or use this as a reference to uh, where to place the components. So I'm just gonna do that. Got my nice little circuit board vise here. We'll just work our way in here. We have a zero ohm resistor. This is basically just a wire, regardless. An LED, and they do have a flat side. These four are the same, all for the LEDs, I bet. It's this way. A cap here. Oh, let's put the IC in. Two more caps. Those right there. 
So one more little thing, which is this little wire here. This wire is actually a contact for the aluminum button. There we go. The button goes in here and they say to glue it, but I'm gonna assemble without gluing that first. Oh dear. That needs to lay flat. Let's see if I can extract it a little bit. That'll work. Here's the button. And I think this is just a capacitive touch button. That goes there. That button does stay in on its own now. I don't think we need glue. A piece of acrylic. Which just sits in there. <laughs> Nothing. Let me try this with a normal charger rather than this fancy Aki power delivery charger. There we go. Yep. That was it. Okay. That's pretty neat. That is a really fun first project to uh, show off what this machine is capable of and get you uh, sort of acclimated to using it. And it would be really easy to make a new one of these. Maybe we need a Strange Parts logo. I want to do one more thing, which is I want to try out the two and a half watt laser on this. It's just a quick raster engraving on uh, MDF wasteboard. I'm gonna go cut this, I'll be right back. All right, 120 millimeters by 100. We're gonna mount that in there. It looks like the laser also takes G-code, which is interesting. That is the one thing there isn't much documentation on yet, is how to generate G-code for this. Check the configuration and then hit run. Now, they did give me some safety glasses. Not terribly opposed to wearing. Partly because they're so stylish. <laughs> you can't see crap in these. They're really dark. All right, run. I think this laser might be screwed up. I think I figured it out. <laughs> Manual says there is a protective cover over the laser. <laughs> well, that's restart this. Oh, that looks a lot better. It's doing the laser thing. It is burning wood. That's what we want to see. bad at all. I mean, I think if you want a laser cutter, buy a laser cutter, but for one-off kind of engraving type tasks, this will work. Well, I think that does it for my unboxing and first use here. I'm very eager to dive into this and try it with more stuff. Based on my use thus far, this is a really well-built machine. It's been very easy to get up and running. Most of the problems I've had have been my failure to read the instructions properly. I wanted to give a few updates after having used this. I guess it's been a couple weeks since I recorded the first part. The enclosure is fantastic. <laughs> I'm just really, really, really appreciating the enclosure. I could totally run this in like an apartment. It's not even half as noisy as running your vacuum cleaner. And it does a really good job in terms of like keeping the dust on the inside. This fixturing kit, I'm just using this a ton and I, I love it. It's perfect for a lot of what I want to do. The controller software, now that I'm used to it, it doesn't have a lot of English labels on it. It just has pictures. But now that I'm used to it, it's really solid. The dust collection, I know early on I was like, mm, maybe it's so-so. I've been cutting uh, white Delrin in here, which is plastic, and like it's definitely collecting stuff. But it's also not collecting stuff. <laughs> As you can see, it sort of coats everything like a a freaking snow globe. I would like to have better, like, I don't know, like the shop bots and things have shoes on them with like black fibers, which really come down and sort of nestle in among where you're cutting. And they seem to pick up a lot more dust. This one's like this flexible rubber. It's so-so. It has this sort of spring-loaded mechanism, which again, I kind of would like it to be a little different. I found it really hard to open <laughs> this. And I still don't quite know how to do it <laughs> reliably. I guess you just pull, but. This filter started to clog up with little aluminum bits and I need to figure out how to 
change that. The things that I'd like to see improve, that's one of them. They just posted machine profiles for a whole bunch of different CAD CAM software, Fusion 360, VCarve, um, and like a handful of other things. So that's awesome. What I will say is like, if you haven't used a mill before, it's not as plug and play as like a laser cutter where you just have your vector, you know, you throw it in, you choose a few settings, you're good to go. I don't have a PCB tool chain up and running yet. I don't think there's a, a path to a tool chain that involves both milling and laser right now, which I would really like for, for PCBs. I have run into a few errors. The machine has occasionally gotten into a weird state, particularly I've had some spindle errors. You can get into a weird software state. It's never happened while milling. It's never interrupted a job or anything and a, a restarting the machine always fixes it. It should be fixed in a, in a firmware update. I'm, it's not, not a major issue. I do wish that it had a more robust XYZ probe. It has a Z probe, which is great, but if you have something that's like, say, like I've been trying to make custom fixtures that bolt down to the bed, and what I realized is I don't have a good way of locating them in XY. So all of the bits that this shipped with are eighth inch bits. Shafts, an eighth inch collet. They do ship with some other collets, including quarter inch, and I have went out and got a quarter inch two flute end mill off of um, McMaster car. And I don't know, I, I'm being fair, a fair bit more aggressive with that bit than the manual says I probably should. It doesn't have any feeds and speeds for quarter inch, but I'm milling things like Delrin and even aluminum for roughing uh, with the quarter inch bit at, at pretty decent speeds. So I don't know if I'm putting too much wear and tear on this machine, but it certainly is helping me with machine times, machining times. Uh, I was going from hours and hours down to, you know, I don't know, this took me maybe an hour of machine time to make. Maybe the, the Make Hero folks are gonna yell at me and tell me I'm ruining my machine, but uh, so far so good. The only problem now is that it kind of interferes with the automatic tool changer because I have to change collets between bits. The last thing that you probably are wondering is how much does it cost? The list price is $5,000. Uh, plus shipping. They are 20% off if you go to strangeparts.com slash Carvera. And there's a, a clickable link down in the description. And in the interest of full disclosure, that is an affiliate link and the proceeds from it go to supporting the channel. So I think that about does it. I mean, to wrap things up, I think if you're looking for a solid works out of the box, desktop CNC mill, this is a great option. And uh, that's not my, my paid opinion, that's my genuine opinion. I'm really happy to have this and it's gonna become a regular tool here in the shop. I'm already working on multiple projects on it and uh, you'll definitely see it in upcoming videos. So, uh, you know, if you want something that can make circuit boards and cut plastic and aluminum, you know, it's relatively straightforward to use, it's a great option. It's not your cheapest option, but it's solid. If you'd like to support Strange Parts, I just launched a Patreon. You can find out more about that at patreon.com slash strangeparts, and you'll get early access to rough cuts while we're editing videos like this, as well as a ton of other stuff, including t-shirts and hoodies, and all sorts of other behind the scenes things. All the money goes into the channel and allowing me to work on cool projects that are sometimes expensive, and hiring some folks to help me uh, make more exciting videos. If you'd like to support me and the channel, please go check that out.